Hi, my name is Samantha and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking all about fabric. Let's get into it. Today I'm going to be answering some questions I've gotten in the comments of my different videos um, and some questions that I get asked by people at shows. So what different questions have people asked me about fabric? The first big question is whether or not I pre-wash. If you've watched any of my videos, I think you're well aware that I am team pre-wash. Now, this is a big debate whether you should or shouldn't pre-wash your fabric. I am all for pre-washing, especially because I get my fabrics from the thrift store. And thrift store fabrics typically are smelly and fabric tends to capture the smells. So if I have a smelly fabric on my shelf here, it's gonna make all the other ones smelly. And I just, I don't like that. And I don't want my room to smell like a thrift store. So I surge the raw edges and I pre-wash all my fabric. Um, I'll surge it, then I'll wash it, then I'll dry it. And I do it on a normal cycle wash, normal cycle dry. Um, that way, no matter what I create the item into, whether it's something for me, something for a gift, something to sell, it doesn't matter what the person does with it because it's already been washed on a normal cycle. Granted, if you wash it, wash it, wash it on hot water, the fabric's gonna fade, right? But it shouldn't shrink, it shouldn't bleed, and any of the smells would have gotten out at that point. Um, also, if bought fresh from the store, um, that's when it tends to bleed more, and that's when there tends to be different chemicals and stuff on the fabric because it came from the fabric creator place. Um, so I am definitely team pre-wash. Uh, after I get it out of the dryer, then I'll iron everything, put it um, on the appropriate uh, item, which is the next question. How do you store your fabrics? So all of these guys here are on comic book boards Which goes into the next question as well is I've been asked if these fabrics up here are fat quarters fat quarters are About this big. These are all yardage. So they are by no means fat quarters. They are rolled up on a comic book board and then they have clips. So that is how I store all my fabric. These units here are from Ikea. There are four shelves and then two drawers on each. They are absolutely perfect for the fabric. I would love to have two more of them. And um, like in the drawers, I have all my patterns over here. So they're just fantastic and absolutely perfect. This is how they come, like they come with three shelves. So you can make the, the four shelves and it fits the comic book boards, just perfect. The only thing that would make it better is um, to have doors, but I opted to go for the open storage instead of the door storage because of the, um, like if it was a door up here, that'd be okay. But the ones that are doors all the way down, like for example, right now I have something on the floor, that means that I wouldn't be able to access any of this fabric because there's something on the floor in front of it. And I typically have my craft room quite packed, so I don't want to have to have an issue with my fabric. And I really haven't had any issues with them getting dusty on the front or anything like that. Um, and then the shelves, they're not too deep where it's a waste, but there are, is enough space where I can put little knick-knacky things in front of it or different embellishments. So I... I absolutely love this storage solution. I think it's perfect. Uh, next question. Uh, when I washed the um, cotton flannel bolts, did I do it as an entire bolt? Did I cut it up? And how many fit in the washing machine? So how I lost sleep over this. I thought of it over and over and over. And I did a whole video about a year ago about the differences in shrinkage in flannel. And it's very drastic. Some of them shrink a lot, some of them shrink none. And you have no idea what it's going to be unless you bought that specific fabric before. And even that, it could be slightly different because it was made slightly different. So I want to pre-wash everything. So I surged the two raw edges of each bolt. So that's eight yards or in some cases 10 yards of fabric. And I washed them as an entire bolt. So what I did is I opened the one side, opened it up, surged it and then I pulled it off the bolt and then I opened it up all the way. My arms were killing me after doing this because there's 50 bolts and you know eight or ten yards of each and then I sorted it by colors. 
Um, cause like the reds, you don't want to wash the red ones with the white ones or it's going to bleed onto that. So I sorted them by colors. My washing machine, I could have put three bolts in at a time. It did have space for that. However, when you have the pieces of fabric like that, they get all tangled up inside of each other. So it's just not worth it. I ended up just doing two bolts at a time. So that was 25 loads of laundry. And I think it took me like four days to do it. I was doing laundry like from the time I woke up to the time I went to bed. Um, Cause I'd put it in the washing machine. And, like, and when I put it in the washing machine, again, I'd make sure the entire bolt was open. So like every inch of it could be washed, put two bolts in. And then once it came out of the washing machine, I again had to open it, make sure it wasn't tangled, throw it in the dryer, um, and then run it on one cycle. So that was like 30 or 40 minutes. And then I had to pull it out. And then I'd have to do this on the bed because it was just two eight yard pieces of fabric. And I'm sitting there untangling it and like opening it up again and then put it back in the dryer again for an hour. Um, and the lint, you also have to clear out the lint trap after the first time and the second time. And most of the times, both times, it's absolutely jam packed full. The cotton flannel just makes an insane amount of lint. Um, and then I could finally take the fabric out of the dryer, lay it down. So then I just did like a rough fold where I folded the two um, selvages together and then I just uh, folded it up and then I went to the other end and then I like laid it out flat, pushed out all the creases and then rolled it nicely, hoping that I wouldn't have to iron it. However, when I went to go cut it, um, as you can see, I have it all cut right here. It, I like, even though I tried my best to make it as flat as possible so I wouldn't have to iron the bolts, which would take hours, um, I did not want to do that. And so what I ended up doing is I, so instead of wasting the fabric, cutting it before I washed it, what I did is, so I needed four 12 inch cuts or two 24 inch cuts. And so I just measured it at 25, moved it at 25 and I cut it. So I know there's a little wiggle room. I need to iron all these and then I can cut them more precisely. So there will be wasted flannel here, but much more consisted, wa consisted waste versus if I would have cut them to be the size that I wanted, some would have shrunk way more than others and I wouldn't know which ones. I don't know if that all made sense. In my mind, it makes sense. Let me know if that makes sense in the comments down below. Uh, next question. Someone asked me if I would make cloth diapers. So I am currently not looking to make any new products for my uh, business. So as far as selling any new product, no, I am not making anything new. Um, if a friend or family member asked me to make it, I might look into making it and make it, um, but probably would not make anything new. Or, I, let me take that back. I am not making anything new. Absolutely not making anything new to sell. Um, now I do want to make patterns, right? So that is a goal of mine. So uh, learning how to make it and then making a video on how to make it is different than, you know, having it in person. Um, Cause I've talked about this in videos before. When you are trying to sell a product, um, like the jar openers, for example, you see how many jar openers I have here? This entire shelf is too deep with jar openers because I'm working on the 600 jar opener project right now. If you don't have at least 50 of a pattern, 50 different patterns available of a product, then people don't want to shop what you have. And I'm really not interested in making 100 cloth diapers for them to maybe or maybe not sell. So it's just, it's way too much of an investment to make a new product and I'm not interested. Um, and then someone asked if I was going to store the extra, um, craft supplies in the basement. So I need to go through these bins and make sure if there's anything, um, that I definitely need to use or whatnot and like organize everything I already have out. Um, uh, I've just been prioritized getting ready for Idalee, which is in less than two weeks. And it's my first show of the year. So I definitely want to make sure I have all of my stock ready. That is much more important to me than making sure everything is organized that I don't need for my business right this second. So I don't know, we'll see how that goes. I definitely don't wanna store any fabric in the basement because I don't want it to get dusty or dirty, not interested. I put way too much work into pre-washing it and making sure it's all clean and ironed to make it dirty. Um, and then uh, ironing, do you iron before you cut or after you cut? So like I said, these guys, I cut them roughly and then I'm going to iron them nicely and then I'm gonna cut them again. All of the jar openers, I ironed all the fabric pieces and then I cut them. You definitely, definitely, definitely want to 
iron your fabric before you cut so you get the most precise measurement. I know it can be overwhelming if it's like a big piece of fabric. Uh, for example, like I have all these fabrics from the rummage sale that I have still not ironed because they're not a top priority and I need to iron them to then put them on the comic boards to put them on the shelf. So, um, and this whole shelf is taken up by jar openers right now. So need to finish these jar openers, get them into my um, show uh, inventory and go on from there. Let me know what other questions I can answer in the comments down below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and have a lovely day.